Oh, that does not taste the same. Try this again. I was hoping to do coffee talk outside somewhere so you guys could see the beautiful view, but when I try to go outside, there's no connection, so it doesn't really work. Um, so I don't really know, like this view is a little bizarre, but this morning we're gonna talk about resentment and I think it's a really important conversation. So, um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Talk. We're here. It's so good to be back. Um, I wasn't gone that long, but when it's like uh, there's no connection, you're just out there in the world like, hey, no connection. Uh, the sun in Dominican Republic is real. Okay, I mean real. Woo Chile. Uh, burnt, burnt, burnt. I'll be super tan in like a day, but that first day, boy. Ooh. Hey, Freehold. Um, okay, so I have been going through something with a friend. And I use the term friend loosely. I feel like I need to define, continue to define the fact that he is a friend because he's a male. And you know, we're a very uh, immature society. If a woman has a male friend and she doesn't continue to reiterate the fact that he is indeed a friend, people will naturally assume they are sleeping together. Um, which we are not. But I use the term friend loosely because I don't feel that this person really understands what it means to be a friend. I think that a lot of times the word friend is much like the word um, snow cone in that you just grow up knowing what it is and you don't ever really learn what it entails right? Like you hear the term friend and you just know what a friend is, but like at what point are we taught how to really be a friend, how to friend somebody? Let them, uh, listen, mirror, a mirror, don't send me any weird photos and don't tell me you love me. It's super weird. Stop, I don't wanna to have to block you, but you're already annoying the shit out of me, okay? Okay. Um, so to say he's my friend, I need to say that because he's not my lover, okay? Anyway, I um, also know what it means to be a friend and I do a lot for the people that I love and for the people that I care about and I, um, I am a, an active friend. I friend people like a verb, right? Like it's a verb. Um, my friend Cleet, who is watching right now, is one of the best, truly best friends I've ever had. Better friend than I am right now. Checks on me all the time. Always wants to know what I need, if there's anything he can do. Sometimes he's just there to listen. Like if I was single and liked white guys, Cleet would be it for me. True story. But I'm not single and I don't like white guys, so there's that. All right, so anyway, mm, um, anyway, I realized that a lot of times we also use the word grudge. Are we holding grudges? Are we holding on to grudges? And I realized, no. What is truly stopping me from being able to love people the way that I have been called to love them through the hard times, by the way, I'm talking about through the hard times, is resentment. Resentment is the inability to get over something that you perceived to have been done wrongly 
to you. Okay? It is resentment is literally stopping us from being able to love one another. We are a, a, a race, race is not the right word, a, a, a society, a group, whatever, of people who are consumed with resentment. And when we do something for somebody and it is not reciprocated or it is not appreciated, the healthiest thing to do would be to say, okay, I did something wonderful for this person. They didn't reciprocate it or appreciate it. So I just won't do those things for them anymore. Instead, we become consumed with resentment. How could they not see what I've done? How could they not appreciate me? Here comes the ego. I, me, I, me, right? And I know that I am a slave to my ego. I have to work on it every single day. The people asking if my husband is white is the funniest shit ever. I'm sorry. That is so funny to me. I'm so sorry for getting distracted, but that is hysterical. <laughs> Isn't her husband white? I swear her kids are white. Uh, resentment is toxic. It is absolutely toxic. We become slaves to resentment. It does not, it does not allow us. You, you can not love somebody that you are harboring resentment towards. It, it is, it, it's like, it's like taking a fish out of water and telling it to breathe. It, it, it cannot you can not love somebody that you are harboring resentment for, okay? So if you are trying to love someone, but you are harboring resentment towards them, it will destroy you from the inside out, okay? I have a lot of resentment towards my husband about certain things. Okay, um, I am, I have to really, really work hard at chipping away at the resentment and figuring out what has been intentional and what is just a product of who he is. Like, what is he doing to me intentionally? And what is he just, like, what is just a product of who he is? He's not doing it intentionally. He's just literally who he is. And as I unpack all of that, I can slide away some of the resentment because the truth is I want to love him. I want to love him. Resentment makes it very hard. I want to forgive this friend. I want to say to this man, you don't know any better. You are a product of your environment and you have never been taught how to be a good friend. Right now I am caught in that place between, am I too old for this shit and do I need new friends who don't know how to be friends or do I answer the call that God has given me to help somebody through a very hard time? And in that no, they have limited capability in what they are willing to receive and give. Because a lot of times, People are in such bad places, they can't even receive what we are bringing to the table. So we show up for them as friends and we expect them to appreciate and we expect them to reciprocate and they can't even receive because they are so broken. They can't even receive what we are bringing. And we get so angry, right? We get so angry and so resentful, like I have done all of this for you. Where is the appreciation? Where is the reciprocation? And they still can't even receive the love. We They don't even know what to do with it. They don't love themselves. So they have no idea how to take love, especially from somebody like me who loves big and loud and consistent. 
You see, a lot of people can take love in small doses, but they've never really been exposed to consistent love. And think about how sad that is. Think about how sad. Have you ever, have you ever seen one of those uh, dog videos where the dog is really aggressive and it's locked up somewhere and the person has to save the dog and like the dog's trying to kill them, right? And then over time with consistent care and consistent love, the dog starts to turn around. And then at the end of the beautiful video, the dog is like the happiest, sweetest, most amazing dog ever. Just so you know, don't try that shit with men, okay? Because we like to say they're dogs, they're not. They're assholes. But, but, the, because I don't want you all out here like loving the wrong men and coming back to me a year later like, I was waiting for him to turn around and become like the dog and like he never did. No. Okay, no. That's not what I mean. I'm just trying to make the the consistent correlation. Um, so, right now, I am full of resentment for a million different things. And I understand that the alternative to resentment is grace. To wipe the slate clean for somebody and say, I won't be stupid, I won't let you hurt me, but I can't harbor resentment for you because I want to love you and I want to be a good friend. And I understand that right now you don't understand how to be a good friend. So I'm going to have to tread lightly and give less, but I don't want to disappear. This is what I'm thinking. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. But resentment is, is the inability to let go of something that you feel has been wrongly done to you. And or when you feel forsaken, and recognizing resentment and being honest about it, like, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm resentful. I'm, I'm resentful of this relationship. It's one-sided. I'm doing everything. Here's the other thing I want to say about friendship. I have girlfriends who never make plans. I'm always the one to make plans. They show up, we have a great time, but it's always on me. There were times that I felt resentful for that. I am resentful that that it always has to be on me. Like, why can't anybody else ever pick up the ball and say, hey, I'm going to get all the girls together. Jamie does it all the time. Blah, 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 blah. And what I realized is that my friends do so many other wonderful things. That is not their strong suit. They're not the best planners. They're great shower-uppers, but they're not the best planners. And I am a great planner. So I had to let go of the resentment and go, you know what? You, who cares? Be the planner. It doesn't mean they don't love you. You have to look at what people are capable of. Okay? Are they capable? Leanne is watching right now. I saw her 50 times. Lee, I love you with my entire heart. And when you text me, when you text the girls and you say, hey girls, it's been too long, let's get together. It makes me feel good because I go, oh, there's Leanne. She sees me. She remembers that we're in love. She doesn't know what a cannoli is. She does now. Um, but my girlfriends are not not planning things 
intentionally. They're not not making plans because they want me to feel bad. So I was looking at the resentment and I'm like, you're holding on to resentment towards people you love so much who love you. And that's ridiculous. They're not capable. It's just not who they are. Adrian will never be that girl. It's not who she is. Right? I am that person. I'm the person to text and be like, hey, I miss you. I love you. When can I see you? It's been too long. That's who I am. So I look at this situation with my husband and I'm unpacking the things in my marriage that are intentional and the things that really he he's not capable of giving. And a lot of times our egos lie to us. The devil lies to us and goes, they're capable. They just don't want to. They just don't like you enough. They just don't love you enough. And that's not the truth. Michael loves me with everything that he has. He loves me the best way he knows how. That is the truth. There are certain things he's just not. Kim, you're our mob boss. <laughs> Lee, I love you. There are certain things he's just not capable of. And the resentment that I'm carrying towards him is not healthy because it's, it's, it's a Jamie thing. It's literally a Jamie thing. So I am working. I'm not there yet. I just want to keep it a hundred. For those of you watching who are telling my mother-in-law, I'm working on it. Make sure you tell her some of the good and not just the bad. Thank you so much. Okay. But I have to work on it. I have to literally unpack it. Like, okay, here's today's resentment towards Michael. What are the things that he can actually control? And what are the things that are just inherently who he is? Can he really change this? And if not, expectation is what brings resentment. Expectation is what brings resentment. When people don't meet your expectations... You become resentful. That's a fact. That's it. Oh, Barb, the spies. We could have a whole dinner talking about the spies, honey. The spies. The Coffee Talk spies. I should get some people a t-shirt that says Coffee Talk family. And then some teach people a t-shirt that say, I'm just here to spy. Um, expectation breeds resentment. That is just a fact. If I sat around expecting my girlfriends to make plans, if I just sat around looking at my phone every day going, when are these snitches going to make plans? When are they going to text me and make plans? Right? I would be so resentful every single day. Watch now Leanne's going to text me and say, Hey, can we get together when you get home? Um, it's expectation that that breeds resentment. So that's another thing that I have to work on. And listen, like I get it. You come to you come to Coffee Talk every day. And I bet you guys just want one Coffee Talk where I'm like, "You know what? It's not you, it's them. You're amazing. They're a bunch of assholes." I I want to be able to say that to you, but the truth is it's all of us. And if I have to it says promise for Pinky Promise. That's right, Lily. Um, if if uh, if you want somebody to lie to you and tell you like it's not you, I mean, we got to do the work. All of us, we have to do the work because at the end of the day, we are going to die, and I want us to die as close to happiness as possible. Peace, really peace. That's what I want for you. If you're happy, amazing. But are you peaceful? That's what I want for you. Peaceful. And listen, how do you know if it's somebody, somebody asked and a lot of people have asked me, Jamie, how do you know if they're not capable or they're just not making the effort? You got to know the people you surround yourself with. You know, I mean, can you ever really, really, like, can I, could I, like, even if, let's just use Leanne as an example because she's watching. Let's say there are other friends in Leanne's life that she goes out of her way to make plans with all the time. 
She never goes out of her way to make plans with me, but she shows up for me all the time, whenever she can. But she doesn't ask me to hang out. Now, I'm just using Leanne as an example. Leanne's an amazing friend, and she was my first friend in Birmingham, and there's a whole chapter in my book about her, and I love her like an actual sister. So there's no beef between me and Leanne. Let me just say that. Um, but let's just say I found out that there was another friend that Leanne had that she always made plans with. Texted her all the time. Hey, wanna, wanna hang out? Wanna go to dinner? Wanna go to a concert? Wanna travel? Wanna do this? And rarely, and she rarely does that for me. Now I see that she is capable of the behavior. She's capable of texting somebody and asking them to hang out. She's capable of calling. She's capable of making plans. Why isn't she doing it for me? Here comes the resentment. Why isn't she doing it for me? Why isn't she doing it for me? Then you have the next step is intent. Is she intentionally doing this to me? Does she want to hurt me? Does she know how I feel? Or am I harboring resentment in my brain and she has no idea? Is it possible that she's gotten so used to and comfortable with me initiating plans that she doesn't think she needs to do it? Is it intentional? What is the intent? If I determine that it isn't intentional, then I'm a fool for carrying resentment. If I have not communicated to her how I feel, then I am a fool for carrying resentment. Leanne is not a mind reader, okay? We just taught her what a cannoli was a couple years ago, remember? She's definitely not a mind reader, okay? Also, it is possible that the relationship she has with the other friend is different in that that other friend requires that. So Leanne is trying to meet that friend where she is. Totally possible. I don't require that. Okay, so she's probably thinking, I don't have to be texting Jamie all the time. She doesn't require that. Leanne and I, again, using her as an example, I can go three weeks without talking to Leanne and then text her, I need you, my phone will ring like that. Like that. She could be in Florida, on a vacation, in Italy, having sex. She could be anywhere doing anything. And if I text Leanne, I need you, she's there. So I know the intent. I know who she is. So any resentment that I feel towards her is my ego. Okay? It's my ego. Now... If I communicate to her that I need more from her and she does not try to meet me where I am, now we have a different situation. Now resentment will come back. And this is the situation that a lot of you are finding yourselves in now with lovers, with friends, with bosses, where you've communicated your needs and your wants and they are not trying to meet you where you are. When you say to somebody, let me tell you what's a deal breaker for me though. A deal breaker for me is when someone says, that's just who I am. Bitch, then you are alone. I am done with you. The second someone says to me, when I say I need more or here's what my issue is and they look at me and go, that's just who I am. That shit is tired. It's an excuse. Do the work. Be a grown up. Grow up. Grow, period. Because if that's just who you are, you're going to be that person by yourself. That is the quickest way to get me. If you ever want me out of your life, if you ever want me out of your life, say that shit to me. This is just who I am. You sound stupid. That's what you sound. Stupid. If somebody loves you and tells you they need something from you, you're this is who I am. You sound stupid. Lose my number. In fact, block me. Do us both the favor and block me. Okay? These grown ass men, yes, I said men, talking about, shit, that's just who I am. Bruh, shut up before I fucking donkey punch you right in your neck. I can't stand that excuse. It makes me sick. Sick. Can you tell? I feel some type of way about that. 
this is who I am. Okay, so go be toxic by yourself in the corner where you can't hurt anybody. Stop coming around here to all of these women with your toxic, I'm not going to grow ass because we don't, mm -mm, nope. I can't grow. That's just who I am. Shut up. If I can grow, anyone can grow. I don't think you people understand how dangerous I was back in the day. Dangerous, violent, aggressive. Snatching people by their hair and beating the snot out of them because I was so angry at the world. So if I can grow and I can heal and I can love and I can forgive and I can unpack and I can love God and I can work through my shit, so can you. This is who I am. You sound ridiculous. Shut up. All right. That's how I feel about that. Well, yeah, God is definitely working in my life. He's, I know that. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> if you think I could do this without God, you are crazy. <laughs> uh, no. Nope. Um, no, I can't do any of this without God. Are you from South Jersey? Uh, no, I'm from Central Jersey. South Jersey say pop. We say soda. Nope, 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 nope. Don't get it twisted. Um, I'm from right there in New Jersey. Right there. Um, okay. So Hola. Um, I love you guys, and this is a very important coffee talk. This coffee talk means this episode or whatever it's called, episode. I don't know. Um, really, really really matters to me because resentment is killing a lot of friendships, a lot of relationships, a lot of professional relationships because people aren't communicating, their egos are taking over, they're harboring a ton of resentment. You cannot love while you are harboring resentment. It's, it's literally impossible. It's like a fish trying to breathe out of water. So share this video with people that you love. Tag people, share them. I don't know how to do it on Instagram, but I do know how to do it on Facebook. Um, and um, yeah, let's keep doing the work, man. Keep doing the work. I love you so much today. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Have a great day.